game one of the league championship series was like opening night revisited, right down to the particulars. 3-2 pitch, swing and a long drive, there she goes, way out of here, home run, Jake Lozinski! And now the ceremonial first pitch for tonight's second game of the National League Championship Series, the ball to be thrown out by the noted author. To James Mishner. And we are ready to begin game number two. The Phillies and the Astros. All right, let's take a look at the batting order of the Houston Astros leading off, and they've got their best lineup possible in tonight. Terry Poole. Enos Cabell batting second, the third baseman. Joe Morgan, the pepper pot, back in the lineup. Then Gio Cruz, and he knocked in 91 runs. Cesar Cedeno next, and after Cesar, the big man down. Then Alan Ashby, the catcher acquired from the Blue Jays. He's done a great job. Then Craig Reynolds, and finally the fireballer, Nolan Ryan. All right, right now, let's take a look at the Philadelphia Philly defense. The veteran Pete Rose at first base. He started off that sixth inning last night with a base hit, scoring ahead of Greg Luzinski. Rose at first and Manny Trio will be at second base. The shortstop, the veteran Larry Boa. Over at third base will be Mike Schmidt, the home run leader in both the American and National League. In left field, the man who did it all last night with one swing of the bat. Greg Luzinski has a base hit in every championship series game he's played. There's Gary Maddox in center field. And over in right field will be Bake McBride. The same lineup that Dallas Green started last night behind the plate. Bob Boone. And on the mound will be right-hander Dick Ruthven, a record of 17 wins, 10 losses, an earned run average of 3.55 this year. He won his last start, the opening night, the first of a three-game series at Montreal. So tonight, Ruthven and Ryan. Another day, I'll get a little more gravel in you. You'll be good on it. The blues, uh, you're working on it. I thought he should have sung last night <laughs> as a tribute to the Houston Astros. He should have gone Nashville, should have sung missed opportunities on the first night in town. <laughs> Terry Poole comes up and look at the numbers on this youngster. He's a fine, tough, hard nosed baseball player who will take and exercise any opportunity offered him. 282 on the year. Ruthman. Three and one against the Astros in 1980. Lifetime going back to the time Dick was with the Atlanta Braves. Seven and eleven. And we are ready to begin the first pitch of the second game of the National League Championship Series. It's just low for ball one. Larry Boa sets it shortstop and the pitch to Terry Poole is hit in the air down the left field line. Greg Luzinski is going to get the in. And you've got one out. I think we're going to see probably kind of the same game that we saw last night because and it's going to be keyed on Nolan Ryan. Ruthven is really not going to give up too many runs. He's had good success against the Houston Astros this year. A record of three wins and a loss and a fine 1.41 ERA overall. But it's going to be keyed on Ryan. If he can hold the power down of this Philadelphia ball club, it's going to be kind of the hunt, peck, and scratch type offense that Bill Verdon has with the Astros. Edith Cabell. Takes low. There's Kathy Cabell. Cabell. Doesn't have a whistle. No. Went far enough. One ball and one strike. 17 and 10 on the year for Dick Ruthven. The most wins in his career at a single season. The previous high having been 15 back in 1978. 
He's had a couple of trips to the surgeon to have bone chips taken out of his pitching elbow. For the shortstop, Boa. Two out. Now here's a very important figure for the Houston Astros making his first appearance in the championship series. Joe Morgan. He has a very sore knee. Still he says he feels like a different man tonight from what he was last night. Watching him take batting practice he seemed to dig in there decently and to pivot well enough. Well that was a big thing turning on that leg and on that knee. He said it's OK and boy they need this little guy. He's had himself quite a September. He has really come on actually about the last six weeks of the season. It's just high. He hit lead off. Much of the year. After he hurt the knee he was moved down to third and that's where he is tonight. There's a strike one and one. He had an extra value as Nolan Ryan pointed out in his talk with me earlier. Joe took some of the heat off Nolan with the big money bonus situation by joining this club too. Ball is hit to center. Sending Maddox back. Gary makes the catch. And so Ruthman gets the Houston Astros in order in the top half of the first inning. We'll see now how the Phillies fare in the bottom of the first against Nolan Ryan. The lineup for the Phillies, Petey Rose leading off. Batting second, the Baker man, McBride. And batting third, the superstar, Mike Schmidt. Batting fourth, last night's hero, the Bull, Greg Lezinski. Batting fifth, steady going Manny Trio. Batting sixth, with or without his sunglasses, Mr. Maddox. And then comes Larry Boa. And then comes Bob Boone. And finally, Dick Ruthven, who turned back the Astros tidily in the first inning. Now defensively from first to third, it'll be Hal Morgan, Reynolds, and Cabell. The outfield from left to right, Jose Cruz, Cesar Sereno, Terry Poole, and the battery tonight of Alan Ashby and Nolan Ryan. Ryan with a record of 11 wins and 10 losses and an ERA of 3.35 on the year. Ryan 1 and 2 against the Philadelphia Phillies this year. The key here is going to be the control of Ryan and basically the control of his curveball. If he can get his curveball over, he can be awfully tough. And that means that they cannot just lay back and lay on the fastball. So I think this game pattern for Ryan will set up very early. That stadium, an attractive facility here in Philadelphia. Pleasant place to play. The game of baseball is 330 feet down each line. It's 371 left and right and 408 in straightaway center. And coming to the plate, the leadoff for the Phillies is noted, Pete Rose, who during the 1980 season had five hits in ten trips against Ryan. Rose on the year hitting 295 left-handed and 254 right-handed. They give him the right field line. Right from Nolan Ryan. Ryan's last start against the Dodgers, although he got beat two to one on Garvey's home run, he had a real good outing. If he can bring that consistency into tonight's game, he can be awfully tough. Rose fouls it away. Pete started last night's game by fouling off ten. Edge to Ryan, 0 and 2. That ball is high and away, 1 and 2. That brings Ryan down off the mound. He thought he had one there. It is now two balls and two strikes. High, full count to Rose, 3 and 2. And one of the big things that Nolan has to think about is keeping that arm up. As soon as he gets that elbow down and starts leading with that elbow, he gets that fastball tailing up high and away like that last pitch. Rose fouls it off. Rose will keep him working. You know, it's funny, John Vukovic told me, he said, he thinks that the key 
was Pete Rose last night coming up in the sixth inning. Just the determination that he had going up there and standing at home plate and getting up into that batter's box. He said it was something. He says, I can't explain exactly what it was, but it's something that we saw in the dugout and you could hear the guys just all of a sudden kind of pick themselves up. We knew if we could get a couple of runs, we could win. That was when the crowd came alive to Ryan at three and two computed they computed that more than 58 percent of the batters he went three and two with wound up walking and that's what just happened here but Keith that was early in the season after that computerization study Ryan started paying closer attention to himself. Before the All-Star game, he walked 67 batters in 113.2 innings. After the All-Star game, he walked only 31 in 120 innings. But he fell prey to the old habit here with Rose. He bounces off, Bake McBride up, takes 0-1 in the last 11 outings for Ryan. To give you an idea how he was able to cut down on his wildness, he averaged uh, just about one and a half walks per nine inning, walking 12 and 74 innings pitched. That was then, this is now, and he's got a 2 0 count on Fake McBride. Now Joe Morgan is going to come in and talk to him. Ryan has good velocity. And you think that the little guy who, right now, you would have to guess that he is the captain of that infield. Just more or less telling Nolan, come on, let's throw strikes. You've got good stuff. Let's make him hit the ball. There's no defense for a walk, and we've seen that already. Rose is at first, nobody out. McBride hits it in the air down the left side in play for Jose Cruz, the left fielder. One out. Well, he got out of that. That could be a very big key right there. The main thing that you want to do you want to try and keep the Roses and the McBrides off the bases because all of a sudden, as Keith, as you said, you're looking down the barrel, you've got Schmidt and Luzinski, the two guys that can beat you with a long ball. One of the reasons Nolan's been 11 and 10, and he's been perfectly candid about this, he said, I had a rude awakening. It's been a lot of years since I was in this league, and I couldn't adjust to the batters that quickly. With one down and Rose at first, the pitch to Schmidt, strike one. That'll change some thinking right there, the curveball for the strike. Now you just maybe, maybe you don't lay back on the fastball. And that curveball of Ryan's, when it's working, dives straight down almost. Schmidt hits it in the air to center field. Cedeno backs up a little, has plenty of room. And you've got two out. And there's a good heads up play by Terry Poole right over there with Cedeno because Rose was tagging and on his way to second base. Cedeno, he couldn't lollygag around out there in center field. He had to get it back in, or Rose had been standing at second base. Here's the ball. Greg Luzinski, who's two run homer last night, put the Phillies on top. They went on to win it three to one. it on the corner for strike one and once again the curveball the book on Lazinski keep it up well they got the fastball last night just in a bad location it was down and from the middle of the plate in you heard Greg afterwards he was looking for fastball he got it and I'm, he cowtailed it one strike pitch too high and a little inside one and one Love to see how fast Nolan's throwing his breaking pitch. There have been times when he's thrown that thing 90 miles an hour. <laughs> That's right. 1-1 one, one to Lazinski. There's another one. One and two. There's Gene Lazinski. The Bolton Lizinski. lady, Jeannie Lazinski. The Bolts said they had their best night of the year last night. Absolute satisfaction over that home run the fastball rides high to make it 2 2 raced a lot of wounds with that one Keith. sir as we get into the middle innings to start counting pitches where they mean something 
be alarmed if you hear Ryan going well over 100 by the seventh inning because no, no. he's done it before. He'll go 150. I've seen him throw 170, 180 pitches. You wonder how he does it and maintain the velocity, but he is some kind of phenomenon when he does that. 2-2 two -two with two out. Swing and a miss. So he blows the fastball past the bull. Striking him out, Pete Rose remains on first base, and so we've played one at that stadium in Philadelphia, and we have no score. Our crowd was beyond 65,000 last night. Could be we'll have the same number tonight, or close to it. It'll be Jose Cruz, Cesar Cedeno, and Art Howe. For the Houston Astros in the top of the second inning against Dick Ruthven. Bounce to Schmidt at third. One out. Ball was hit directly to Mike, but I'll tell you, Cruz goes to left field better than any left-handed hitter I think I have seen since Wally Moon had his field days in the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. Cedeno at that 309 average, he was relatively quiet last night. They need something from him. He was one for three last night, but he's a very key man hitting in that number five position tonight for the Astros. Bounces it sharply towards center. Good play by Trio. Throws a little high, but Rose is able to pull it down. And you've got two out. Well, a good play by Manny Trio moving to his right because that ball was picking up speed. And what he does right here, he gets rid of it in a hurry. It throw was up a little bit, but he got rid of it so quickly, knowing the speed of Cedeno, that Rose was able to kind of manipulate over there at first base, move around to make the play and still stay on the bag. He is a solid, steady-going second baseman. He had a great night last night, despite the fact that he nonchalanted Woods' single into the only Houston run. Art Howe is up, takes low. He was collared last night, 0 for 4, and he had opportunities to produce some runs in the early going against Carlton. Howe's a gap hitter, and he rolls that on a check swing to the first baseman, Pete Rose to Ruthven, the pitcher. And so Dick Ruthven's retired, the first six Astros he's faced. And after one and a half innings of play, there's no score. The bottom of the second inning for the Philadelphia Phillies, it'll be Manny Trio, Gary Maddox, and Larry Boa. To face Nolan Ryan, Ryan walked the leadoff man, Pete Rose. He got McBride to fly to left, Schmidt to fly to center, and struck out Luzinski swinging. Now let's see what he's got here in the bottom of the second. Well, a decent fastball. Uh, <laughs> he's got a good fastball tonight. 97 mile an hour fastball. That's two up. Two strikes. Well, that breaking pitch right there, Trio trying to hold up, but he has such velocity on it. And when he gets him over, look out. To the right side, first baseman Howe, one hands it. With the spin that you've got on a baseball coming off the artificial surface, mm, scare you to death to try to take that thing one-handed without having something up there to help you box it around, but Art handled it. Well, the biggest thing he's going to do, he's going to catch that on the big hop. He's not going to play around. If you can get it, charge it, get it on the big hop, and then do what you have to do with it. I don't think there's any carpet like the carpet at Kansas City. That taught him to. Really scoops. Gary Maddox takes it high and tight for ball one. Of course, it doesn't matter when Brett hits it. Hmm. Well, he totaled one today, didn't he? Oh, it didn't. Shoot. On the grass, out in left center. Ball is hit in the gap. The right fielder, however, drifts over. Balls and Terry Poole makes the catch for the second out. Game moving swiftly. Very rapid pace. Pair of power pitches. Ruthman with the Phils being the kind of guy who keeps the ball in play. Gets it over. Ryan started apparently erratically walking Rose, but has settled down since. 
Larry Boa, 259 left handed on the year against Ryan. He swings and fouls it out of play. And defensively, Enos Cabell has come inside the bag at third. In case Larry has ideas of rolling one there. Well, they'll bring everybody in. The outfield is shallow except for the right fielder pool. And they play Boa to hit to the opposite field. And he's fouled his second one off on the left side. Larry, a slap hitter, he's the kind of hitter that. You say, well, you pitch him away, you play him away, and that's exactly what you try and do and go by the book. If he gets a base hit the other way, why, you've still done your job. You made hits, him hit it that way. If he hits a dunker over second base, he can run all night. That pitch is high. Well, with a count of ball and two strikes, if he gets a pitch right now that he can pull and pull it over Morgan's head, then Nolan's made a mistake. He just blew it by him. So Nolan Ryan is impressive in the bottom of the second inning. He threw 19 pitches in the first inning, only 11 in the second inning, and there's no score after two. The boss man of the Astros, Bill Verdon, whose expression doesn't change all that often, except once in a while you detect a little hardening of the jaw when things aren't going terribly well. It's the bottom third of the order, Alan Ashby, Craig Reynolds, and Nolan Ryan. I might say that Nolan Ryan did hit a three run home run for Houston this year. Few others in that uniform can say that. Ashby, 179 left handed, 277 right handed. He did not play last night. One and one. Now, as you said, Dick Ruthven is a type of pitcher that'll keep the ball in play. He's had a good second half of the season. He went 11 and 5, and of course, his 17 wins, a career high. Kind of a little unusual pitching motion. Pulled to trio. One out. Billy manager Dallas Green relaxed last night after the ball game. Very good mood. Seemed easy going today as he came out with his team. But inside, uh, a tad of <laughs> Interesting thing about Reynolds, he didn't have a good night at the plate last night, and the batting average throughout the year speaks for itself. But just before the recently concluded Dodgers series. All outside. Craig switched to about three ounces heavier resulted in a more controlled swing and he was very effective at the plate against the Dodgers. Ruthven goes to two balls and no strikes on the Houston shortstop. I was talking about that pitching motion of Ruthven. You'll see as his starts his takeaway why he'll look right up into the glove and just check and see where the ball is check the positioning of it and then reach for the grip right there. You see him look into the pocket. Three balls and no strikes. She's cute. She happens to be Mrs. Craig Reynolds. Ball four. Here's your first Houston base runner of the night. With Nolan Ryan coming to the plate. <laughs> Nolan has never been noted as a hitter. Yet he was one of only two Astros to hit a three run home run this year, Don. Nolan's got the uh, he'll swing the bat. He's not up there just he's not an automatic out. And of course he can you see he can sacrifice a little bit too. And you might think that that's what he's going to be doing right here with Terry Poole the leadoff hitter on deck. Squares to bunt puts it down well over to Pete Rose the first baseman. And Pete tags him out. With that Reynolds going up to second base. That's the type of offense that Houston will get going for you. They've got to try and move men in scoring position. They are not going to overpower you. They won't drive you out of the ballpark. Notice the bunt playing for one run, and you do that with a pitcher like Ryan in there. Billy Martin made that point this afternoon on our American League Championship Series game in the first inning when Randolph led off the game with a double to right center and was bunted a third. Al Michael said, would you have done that, Billy? He said, yes, if you've got Gidry in there, it could be a one-run game, and Gidry can hold it. 
Ball is slapped to the left side. And Luzinski comes in, taps the ball. Reynolds turns, scores. Houston. Ball gets away. And Terry Poole will go to third. Astros jump into the lead one to nothing. And so the single produced the run because of the sacrifice by Ryan. And it all worked out. Here's a line drive to left field. Now Lazinski comes in. He almost makes a play on this ball as far as the catch is concerned. He traps it. Makes a good play right there. That ball gets by him and that might be an inside the Parker. But the bull comes up throwing. The throw is a little offline. Schmidt cutting it off all the way. Now the runner going from first to second, which was Terry Poole. He was stopping at the time. Schmidt threw off balance and went into right field with Poole moving on to third. So a base hit, an RBI, and an air on the third baseman Mike Smith that enabled Terry Poole to move to third. And here is Enos Cabell, who bounced to the shortstop his first time. Astros to the, to the lead, one to nothing. Inside to the Houston third baseman. Here's the throw by Luzinski from another angle. Now the throw is offline. You see in the background Cabell telling the runner to get down. Now Schmidt throwing off balance back to Trio and throwing it behind him. You see the runner. He was actually halfway between second and or I should say first and second. Terry was dead. Oh yes, he, was. he was. If he makes the throw why they got him. Breaking pitch. Cabell takes it. Two balls and a strike. Now, I was talking to Mike prior to the game. I said, where'd that ball hit you last night that Cabell hit? He hit a shot that staggered him. He says, I'm glad it wasn't over a few more inches. He said, I'd be eating through a straw. Eat on the ground foul. Cabell strikes out on a fastball thrown right through the hand. But the Astros get a run to take the lead one nothing stranding. Very pool at third. Kansas City beat New York 7 2 this afternoon to take the lead in the American League Championship Series. Game two tomorrow night at 8 Eastern Time. It'll be Rudy May for the Yankees and Dennis Leonard for Kansas City. Game two here on ABC. Bob Boone, the Philadelphia catcher, Dick Ruth and the pitcher, and then the top of the order as the Phillies with Rose will start the second time around against Nolan Ryan. Back on the corner. <laughs> yeah. When he gets that curve all over, boy, he takes a lot of initiative away from a hitter. You love to look at the eyes of the hitters when they go up there. They're as big as saucers against Ryan. First of all, you can't really dig in there too much because Nolan, every now and then, can get just a little wild. Ball is hit well to the right side. Terry Poole drifts with it to his left, lags it down for out number one. This program an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. KETV Channel 7 Omaha. Here is Dick Ruthven coming to the plate now. The Philadelphia pitcher. The Phillies do not have a hit as yet. Off Nolan Ryan. The Astros have one base hit and they have one run and they lead one to nothing. This fellow's no jump at the plate either. 235 average. Best ball. Strike one. The Phillies, as you look at Dick's wife Susan, the Phillies have some good hitting pitchers. Standing down around the cage, and boy, they go up there wailing. Larry Christensen. Yes, sir, and they work on it a lot. That's a strike. <laughs> a little different, though, with this Texan out there. It really is. Sure. You talk about pure power. Remember that game he pitched against the Yankees in Anaheim last year in the twilight? He strikes out Ruthven. The ball squirts away, and Ashby will make the throw. That's the strikeout number three for Nolan. Now for the second time, here's Pete. Rose walked his first time. When Nolan first appeared at spring training for the Mets in St. Petersburg, they knew they had a whiz kid. They couldn't see the ball when he threw it, but he really first arrived 
in the 1969 playoffs against the Atlanta Braves when he came in in relief and stifled the then favorite Atlanta team. Rose fouls it away to the left side with two out and nobody on. Then they traded him for Jim Fergozzi. That's right, and Jimmy ended up being his manager. Way up with that one, one and one. That was the only way for Gozi ever got close to him. <laughs> <laughs> when he let that one go, he immediately started his walk off the mound, talking to himself. He'll take a few little turns around the mound. He'll have a little clubhouse meeting out there with himself every now and then. Just trying to keep everything in sync and not try and overpower everything. One and two to Rose. Pete. <laughs> Ooh -wee. Pete says, all right, that one's for you, pal. I'll give it to you. Just missed. Two and two. The thing about Ryan is when he keeps his fastball low, and if he keeps it away from the right-hand hitters or in... I should say the left-hand hitters and into the right-hand hitters, it'll have a tendency to sink and sink pretty good. And of course, when he gets it up, he can really ride it. That's foul back in the crowd. Pete saying that he hit the glove of the catcher Ashby. And home plate umpire Terry Tata said, no, no, that was just a bad swing, Pete. <laughs> that was a defensive swing. Don't give me that stuff. <laughs> Part of Pete Rose's hustle is looking for the edge look at it again claimed interference wanted to get first it's a lot easier that yeah. way when, Ryan, Ryan. Uh, you know, when, you, when Ryan's on you're looking for any kind of a loophole 2-2 two -two pitch that's the base hit first one of the night for the Phillies He's talking to Joe because Joe was riding feet in the batting cage about said your crouch is getting lower every year. <laughs> they played together for so long and had so much success in Cincinnati. The crowds got lower this year. Petey hit only 282 and had one home run. Not normal Rose figures. Baked McBride. Strike on the inside corner. Bakes first trip. Fly ball to left field. Now you talk about unhittable location. That pitch was it, Mr. D. Yeah, big. Not too happy with that call, but that fastball tailing back in. There's Celeste, Celeste. right? Pitcher comes down. Nolan Ryan has it. Throws to first. Ooh, he just almost handcuffed our now as he whistled it right past the flying McBride. The inning is over. The Phillies strand Pete Rose. And after three, the Houston Astros lead them one to nothing. A one nothing ball game. The Astros have the lead on one hit. Both teams with one hit now. Morgan hit a fly ball pretty well to center field. His first time up. Don't mess around with him. He can still do it. Ball one. I think for a man of his size, he probably possesses as much power as anybody I've ever seen. Look out, Joe. That's off the foot, and that doesn't feel good at all. Took I can wipe at it, too, didn't he? I can remember a game down in the Astrodome when Joe Morgan first came up, and we saw him hit a home run off of Sandy Koufax up in the purple section of the dome. Now, we'll see that when we move down there. And that is a long way for anybody to hit one, let alone hit it off of Sandy, but I, that woke everybody up in a hurry. I also heard your conversation. We'll get to that in a minute. Two balls and no strikes. Said you're the only Hall of Famer he never hit a home run off of. It. What'd you do to it? I don't know, but Henry Aaron has a different story. <laughs> Started to go and held. Three balls and no strikes. All he hit was doubles and triples off of me. He's a pesky little guy. He had a great month of September, as we said before. He really came alive. Got to be three and one. He fouled one off, didn't he? Off his foot. Scoreboard showing three and all. Oh. The pitch, low, and Morgan's aboard. Jose bounced to the third baseman Schmidt his first time. Morgan creeping away at first. 
And Cruz hits it high in the air again to the left side for Greg Luzinski. One out. The big thing that Houston was thinking about coming in here, of course, it would have been nice to win two, but they're thinking if they can leave Philadelphia with a split, we're back home, and they play well in the Astrodome. Oh, do they? By the way, Nolan was pretty close to unbeatable in the Astrodome all oh, year. It was on the road that he had his troubles. He was three and eight on the road, eight and two in the Astrodome, thus the 11 and 10 mark. Cedeno. Fine play by Trio got him his first time up in the second inning. To the shortstop four. Morgan hooks him to second base. He's out on the first play. Cedeno aboarded first. Now he looked like he moved pretty well. Now there's the case of having a man on first base. You take a base hit away, but Larry Boa got over there in a hurry. He knew he had just one play, and that was to get the lead man, get Morgan at second base. Larry moving well to his right, the ball coming up, and after that it's just get the lead man. So you've got two out with Sedano at first and Art Howe at the plate, and he pops it foul back upstairs. Sedano, big jump at first base, has to hurry to get back. And Bob Boone thinking along with Sedano, he had a good jump, and I think that Booney jumped out a little quick because he was thinking about going. Now he sees him jump out, they pitch out, and Sedano able to get back to the bag ahead of the tag. Well, let's see what happens here. With a count 1-1. One, one. As the usual happen. There it is. Going. And it's fouled away. Again, yeah. Billy Martin made a point today. He likes invariably in Major League Baseball, after a pitch out, you'll see the runner go on the next pitch. You know that, Don. Well, that's true. And there's but no reason Billy, you shouldn't pitch out two of times. Of course, in two times. And as a matter of fact, Warren Spawn used to do it three times in a row. Do you I, remember? I've seen, seen Spawny do that. I've seen Robin Roberts, pitchers with good control. There's no rule against it, and you may as well. If you can know you can get the ball over the plate, go ahead and pitch out two times. And I have seen it three times. You're right. Does not go this time, and the pitch is high. Well, there's a, a little change of pace right there with a count one ball and two strikes. They can play around with a pitch out. And that time, Sedano just taking a normal lead and watching the pitch. Three and two. Sedeno did make no move at all at that time. None. But anyhow, wanting a husband to do what he did on Monday past. Carry the Astros to victory with his bat. Sharply at the boa. And the inning is over. So the Astros have a little flurry. Can't produce anything after three and a half, one nothing, Houston. The big orange of Texas against the big red of Oklahoma in their annual at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, 12.30 Eastern time here on ABC Saturday. Texas ranked third in the nation, Oklahoma 12. Sooners not too happy about it. The way things have gone so far this season, looks like we might have a little more than the usual amount of scoring in that ball game. And right after the football game comes the third. Uh, the fourth game, if there is to be a fourth game of the championship series in the National League. Second look now for Mike Schmidt, Greg Luzinski, and Manny Trio. Schmidt hit a high fly ball to center field first time. King pitches in one and one. Now with a fastball for a ball, a curveball for a strike, I would say advantage of Ryan. <laughs> what do you look for? Well, I would think fastball. <laughs> uh, Mike was not looking for that. No. He, he was wasn't. looking curve. Well, he came with his fastball to get the edge at one two. Now, 
a guessing game again as Schmidt steps in. I would bet here he gets the first. Lose again. Yep, he brought it up and in, trying to move that ball inside. And that center field camera we talked about last night, the positioning of the feet of Mike Schmidt. He's moved back off of the plate as you look at Pete Rose down in the Philadelphia dugout. But Mike has moved back off of the plate, and it's it's quite noticeable if you can think back and picture his old stance. Look at that right foot. He's well back. Ryan that time was trying to move that ball in. Now they'll go away from him. And he fouls it away again. Ball is well hit to the right side. Poole going back, going back, going back. Can't get it. Off the wall. Smith in the second. Takes a turn. Holds there. Missed his home run by about four or five feet. Well, it's interesting that they never really did come back with a breaking pitch. They had it established, but they come back with a fastball. Now Ryan gets it up over the plate, and Schmidt able to extend those arms, and he just about hits it out of here. Poole making a fine effort, and he might have been able to make the catch of that ball. The ball hit just alongside of his glove, and with nobody out, Schmidt was not going to take a chance and try and stretch it into I'll a triple. I'll be honest. Mike hit that ball and hit it hard to the opposite field, but better timing, and Poole catches yes, that ball. You're right. Better timing on the lead. Her ball is in for a strike on Luzinski. <laughs> so he starts Greg off with a curve. Down the right side. In there for a base hit, extra bases for Luzinski. Mike Schmidt comes in to score, and we're even at one. Ball gets away, backed up by Cadell. Well, that was just an excuse me double. I'll tell you, you've got to give it to the ball. Here we go again. Fast ball. He just tried to get out of the way of it. It's a, just a check swing double. That's all he started. Held up, but he's strong enough. The ball hits the bat. And by the time the smoke clears, Schmidt has scored, tying the score at one, and Lazinski's at second base with a go-ahead run. But whether a check swing or not, the record proves that Lazinski has been maybe the most remarkably consistent player in championship playoff series in Major League Baseball. Frio lays it down. Now, first base makes the play to Morgan covering, and with nobody out, Luzinski moves over to third with on the sacrifice. So, you've got one out, and the go-ahead run at third, and Maddox and Boa scheduled to come next, and a fly ball can produce the man from third. Now, Greg Luzinski has hit in every championship game that he's played in. Right. He actually holds the record. Now is the time Ryan needs a strikeout. What a remarkable statistic <laughs> yes, that is. is. Especially when you think that the major league average is about 55%. That's fouled off. Well, you also know full well that uh, his manager, Dallas Green, is aware of it. See how tight they are, right to the line. 1 1 to Maddox. Ball is hit sharp to the left field for a base hit. Greg Luzinski scores, and the Phillies lead 2 to 1. So that adds to Gary Maddox's remarkable statistic that we just showed you. He didn't have to bunt. Green had a better idea. Shows you how things can turn around also in the course of a ball game. Uh, ball hit to the opposite field by Schmidt. And it really, it might have been able to have been caught, as you say, on a better timing leap by Terry Poole, although the ball was in a tough location. And excuse me, check swing double by Luzinski, and now the base hit by Maddox, and all of a sudden the Phillies on top 2-1. Larry Boa, they pitch out. Maddox stays at first. 
Ball one. See Larry taking a long look at Lee Ilya at third. Ruben Amaro coaching at first. Runner goes. Pitch is swung on. Hit to left. Cruz there. Makes the catch. Runner comes back. Cruz was perfectly positioned. Now yeah, they play him away, pitch him away, and the velocity that Ryan has, why well, you're just about rest assured that that's where Bo is going to hit it to the opposite field. Bob Boone, the batter, with two out. Trying to keep Maddox tidy at first. You got to keep an eye on Gary. He's got a pretty good lead. He's well out on that carpet. 23 base runners have stolen off Ryan this year and his catchers. And Maddox is running and the throw to Morgan and he's out. Then out. We'll have to have another look at that one. Now Doug Harvey said he got him up on the back of the shoulder, back of the neck before he got to the bag. Ashby had something on the throw. So the inning is over. And the Phillies take the lead at the four, two to one. Another look at the inning ending play. Now Maddox moving in to throw to Morgan into the runner. And Doug Harvey said he did something and scraped his head. And that's it. Maddox complained a little bit. Here's a look at a, another angle. Maybe well, got from him that angle, shoulder. it looks like he did. That's right. Mm -hmm. Those two angles kind of nullify one another. Well, there's no umpire in baseball I respect more than Doug Harvey. He made the call. And that's right. So I can't. Uh... And the inning's over. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the single most important fact. <laughs> Rupin just rocking right along, isn't he? He is. He's moving right along. This is a big. This is a big inning for Dick. And I was glad to hear Billy Martin say that today in the Kansas City Yankee game. High fly ball out into right center field. Gary Maddox makes the catch. We've always talked about so many times that one particular inning when your team scores if that pitcher can go out and hold the opposition right there what a great psychological edge that that really gives you. The shortstop Craig Reynolds comes to the plate. Ryan to the on deck circle. Astros still have only one hit off Ruthven for the one run. That ball is hit in the air to the left side. Luzinski coming across the foul line makes the catch. Two down. Tonight after your local news, ABC News Nightline examines the growing wave of anti-Semitism in France following several violent incidents over the past few weeks. Ted Koppel talks via satellite with Simon Wiesenthal, the famed Nazi hunter, and Rabbi Williams, whose synagogue was bombed a few days ago. That's after your local news tonight on ABC News Nightline. This is a swiftly paced to ball game, as you could want to see. No one's got to be a little concerned about swinging the bat, because towards the end of the season, he hurt his back, his lower ligaments in his lower back, swinging a bat. Ball is hit well down toward the it right really field is. corner, and it is a foul ball. I tell you, that ball had carry. Yes, it did. <laughs> three thirty down the line. He hit it three twenty-eight. At old Ebbets Field, that would have been fair in a home run. That's right. Our good friend Harold Pee Wee Reese is here tonight. He can remember some he hit that stuck in the screen. <laughs> Ryan fouls it off again. This one goes upstairs. Strike three. Ryan started to go. The breaking pitch dips in. And so in the middle of the fifth, it's Philadelphia two, Houston one. Booney has struggled some this year with coming off surgery on his left knee. And he has to spend some time every day stretching the thing before he can go out on the ball yard and do his job. Nolan Ryan pitching to him goes low for ball one. This is an important inning for Nolan. He must reestablish his ability to dominate. Suddenly left him last inning. One and one. 
The Phillies lead two to one. Two four and one. Their line. Houston one one and zero. Oh. The shortstop Greg Reynolds slings it over to first for one out. That was not as easy a play as it looked. Don, that ball bounced up into him. He didn't expect it, and it played him. It did. It came up on him just a little bit, but Craig was in front of him, able to move the hands up to make the play. Ruthven has struck out swinging. The Philly pitcher comes up. These two teams travel tomorrow, resume Friday afternoon at the Astrodome in Houston. It'll be game number two tomorrow night at 8 Eastern time for the American League teams, the Yankees and the Royals. And the fastball is on the corner for a strike. Well, it'll be easy for you to go from Houston to Dallas for the Oklahoma Texas team. You plan things well don't you. <laughs> you look at the last two uh, years and uh, you wouldn't say that. <laughs> Dick swings and misses. So Nolan Ryan just overpowered him. Two down. All right. How good is this Philadelphia team as against some prior champions? I asked Pete Rose that question. Well, very similar. I think uh, this this team is pitching rich right now. Uh, you know, you got an offense uh, surrounded by Mike Schmidt and Bake McBride and Wazinski and, and and people like that. Uh, but I don't think there's any team I've ever played on as good as the 1976 Reds. That is the only team that ever won seven straight postseason uh, playoff games. Three here, two against Philadelphia, went back to Cincinnati and swept the Phillies and went and swept the Yankees in four games. So that was just an awesome team. Oh, Petey. Tell it like it is, Petey. Walked in singles, and he's got two singles. In the hole to left. You're talking about Harold Reese. How about this guy? Boy, I'll tell you, guys like that are a pain. <laughs> <laughs> they really are. They are really a pain. You make a good pitch away, they hit it that way. You make it inside, they pull the ball. They don't strike out, they foul off 10 pitches like he did last night, I'll tell you. They make you so mad, you get two nails. Blake McBride is up, hit this in two trips. Inside corner for a strike. Crowd 65,476. That's another record. There's a reason for his continuity of excellence through more than a decade. That man was out here. Petey was at four o'clock, fielding grounders. He works, works, works. Well, time was called as a tennis ball moved onto the field. He did. And Howard, I can remember Pete when he first came up to. The Cincinnati Reds and everything that that man there has done, he has done on his own. He has worked hard every day of his life on this baseball field. Ruffles a lot of feathers. He's so outspoken, which is to me one of his most endearing things. But that still doesn't take away him being a pain at the plate. <laughs> he is that. First baseman Howe, easy play at first to retire the Phillies in the home half of the fifth. And after five, Phillies lead two to one. Back with more between the Astros and the Phillies after this word from our local station. The score is two to one. Philadelphia leads Houston as we go to the top of the sixth inning, and it'll be the third time around for the Houston batting order with Terry Poole coming up in a best three out of five. First team to win three. Wins the National League pennant. <laughs> Philly fanatic finally get out a sign out there on the board says even Howard likes the Philly fanatic. What was that? Did you see that sign out there? Yeah. <laughs> Poole, Cabell, and Morgan bounce right at Manny Trio. One out. Remember what we said, Ruthven keeps the ball in play. He's been busting through this Houston lineup apart from the third inning when he issued a walk to Craig Reynolds. Ryan sacrificed Reynolds. And with two out, Puel shot a single to left to score the runner, and that's been it. Ruthven's been pretty tough in his starts this year in the latter innings later innings because he's actually had an ERA of just about two 
So the longer he goes, well, you could be in a little trouble. The Phillies trying to hold on right here to that two to one lead. He's only allowed the one hit. Right straight up in the air. Cabell. Catcher comes back and back, and it's on the dugout roof. Cabell staying alive on that foul pop, drifting out of play. Swings and misses, and it's strike two. Now that's an interesting statistic, too, on our friend. That's not bad whatsoever. No. He just strikes out. That was a feeble swing. Defensive. Incidentally, Reggie had a difficult day today in Kansas City. Seemed to me he was swinging defensively against Gura. Larry Gura hit some excellent spots on him, too. There is Mrs. Morton. Watching her husband Joe at the plate. Two out and nobody on. His team trailing by one, two to one. In the top of the sixth inning. Just low. The Philadelphia pitching situation is very orderly. It's rested. They've got the people where they want them. And you heard Pete Rose say that this is, in his mind, a pitching rich club. Well, the pitching matchups for that Friday game will be Larry Christensen and then Joe Necro. Now, you just saw that Joe is hitless in his last 14 at bats. That's because he's been hurting. Three balls and no strikes to Morgan right now. He has a way of coming through, just as Pete Rose does. Pops it up, and it's out of play foul. That's interesting. interesting. Verdon gave him the go ahead behind the run. Behind. Three and oh. All right. He's going to take one shot at him. I like that kind of manager. Well, you're not doing anything. You've only got one hit. But you manufactured the one run. Verdon's a remarkable man. Morgan checks on three and one and takes it. I and walks for the second time. I say that, Keith, because of Billy's determination to become a manager. What he gave up to become a manager. The man who figures centrally in that story, and perhaps we can take a look at Billy in the dugout, is a man named Bing Devine, as the shoe is fixed. He's changed shoes. He does. Uh -huh. He has, has, his his spikes on the, has the spikes on the back foot, and then when he gets on the bases, well, he'll put on, they're both the soft sole type shoes right now. But he'll use the spike shoe on the back foot <laughs> to get a good toe hold. I can't tell whether Pete's giving him the business or not. He's saying, what is this? Changing your wardrobe out here in public. <laughs> that's uh, kind of a dangerous place. Yeah, to have I to wouldn't want him to slide. Well, that's on the back of Bobby Lillis. If he slides, he's in trouble. And yeah. we've got a scoop. No, I'm just, <laughs> mean, just mean sitting down. It's a dangerous place <laughs> to have. That's right. <laughs> I remember when Mr. Ricky thought he had another Pee Wee Reese in Bob Lillis. You remember? Yes, sir. Out of the University Bob of Bob came Southern up California. to the big leagues. It didn't take long to discover he would never be another Pee Wee Reese. Joe Morgan edging off and draws a throw from Ruthven. <laughs> Joe trying to make something happen here. Billy Burke. There he is. He had two or three years, good years left as a player. Keith, he was making $55,000 a year for the Bucks, But he knew he couldn't play forever, and he wanted to become a manager. He spoke to Joe Brown, then the general manager of the Bucks. Joe said, we'll make you a manager. We'll start you an aid ball. Bill thought he could go higher than that. We'll finish the story. Cruz looks at it, and it's two balls and a strike to Jose. And so he got permission to call Bing Devine, then running the New York Mets. And he called Bing, and Bing gave him a job as manager of Williamsport. And he went back to about $15,000 a year of his own volition, all three. After serving as manager at Williamsport, he rejoined the Pirates as a coach. But he was destined to be the manager that he became and now he's one of the best in the business. He's a remarkable fellow. 
Ruthven is going to 3 1 on Cruz, having walked Morgan. Joe's going on 3 and 1, and the throw, and he's safe. Then it was ball four, and the throw really actually meant nothing. Booney thought he might have had a strike, might have nipped that outside corner, so Joe going down there for not, but he does not know whatsoever because the play is in progress. Pitch was close. Running. It was close. Booney thought he had it. He might have jumped up just a little too soon and blocked the vision of home plate umpire Tata. So now the Astros have the tying run at second base, the go-ahead run at first base, and you'd have to say they've got a man that they want at home plate in Cesar Cedeno, but as yet, he has not done anything in this playoff series. That's true, but this is the way the Astros come back and suddenly strike. First evidence of loss of control unusual for Ruthman. The poise of Ruthman now being tested some as he walked Morgan. He walked Cruz. Ruthman taking his sweet time. Let the pressure build on Cedeno, the one-two pitch. To the whole boa. Deep. No play. Saved a run. Yeah, there's a good play by Larry Bull moving deep to the hole. And as you say, Howard, that did save a run. Larry got an excellent jump on this ball. There was a high bouncer, and that enabled Boa to get to the ball. Larry's had a little bit of a bad bat, and that is what has been a little of his problem, trying to move to his right. But right there, he saves a very, very big run. Morgan now, at third, Cruz at second, and Cedeno at first for Art Powell. He's had some shots so far in these two-game series, and he hasn't been able to really manufacture anything yet. Look Whoa, out. that's a bullet foul. In fact, he was he was the key out man as we look at the runners. Morgan at third. Cruz at second. Cedeno at first. Astros have only two hits off Ruthven. Check swing foul. And now it's Kyle's turn to walk around and lecture himself. Dickie Knowles is up throwing. And Kevin Trochet. We talked about Boa having that bad bag. Actually, it's a bruised rib. He got in a collision with Dave Parker, and he is really actually taped from the waist on up. He's kind of like a little bit of a robot out there. Ruthven. Against Howe, two strike count, two out, and the bases loaded by the Astros. Oh, great look! Well, that's one of those moments that can haunt a man. Howe strikes out looking. On this pitch from Ruthven, Houston leads the bases loaded. And after five and a half innings of play, the Phillies lead it two to one. You're watching the National League Championship Series. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. KETV Channel 7, Omaha. Bottom of the sixth inning, Mike Schmidt, Greg Luzinski, and Manny Trio are the scheduled hitters. Mike Schmidt with a ringing double off the wall in the fourth. Luzinski a double to follow. Gary Maddox had a single. He had three hits in that inning off Ryan. They got two runs home. They lead in the ball game by a score of two to one. Ryan starts him with a breaking pitch for a strike. In the air. Short left center. Center fielder calling. And Savanio makes the catch. I said Greg struggled all year long. I studied him closely, asked him tonight if he ever thought of giving up on himself. So I think a lot of this game's mental. There's no question about it. And uh, I had maybe 450 ideas given to me on how I should hit, how I should approach the hitting. And uh, like I said, a lot of it's mental. And uh, to be able to come through in the, in the last game in Montreal and get a couple big hits for the ball club. And then again last night, I think, uh, you know, uh, mentally uh, it's given me a big lift. And hopefully, you know, continue on to have a good series. 
so far so good for the big guy. Hmm. One strike on a breaking pitch to him. Up tight that time. One and one. Pretty fair pitch right there. One and two. You got it. Strikeout number five. After watching Ryan for so many years, I just firmly believe the times that he can handcuff umpires too. <laughs> and I've talked to certain umpires and in a course of a game, and especially if Nolan Ryan does not have his real good control, and all of a sudden that catcher starts bouncing around back there, that's what really gives him trouble. But they say, hey, their big man throws too hard at times. We're going to miss some pitches. Manny Trio with two out, bounds it away. Left field, base hit. Right on the button. Now that one hung, John. He got the pitch up, and Trio just stayed right on it. Here's the man who knocked in the lead run. Gary Maddox, single and two trips, and an RBI. Right now, a very big one. Ball. Watching the Houston ball club tonight and tonight, they look just a little down. They look as though they're waiting for something to happen, but nobody yet has taken the bull by the horns to make things happen. Look out. Go to first, hits the umpire, Bruce Freming. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's not going to hurt Bruce. <laughs> The umpires are fair game. They're in play, but you don't like to see that happen. I'll tell you, Brucey, I said last night, he's like the guy who was the last draft choice of the Baltimore Colts in 1970, Don Nottingham, who later gravitated to the Miami Dolphins and proved to everybody he could play football. Same kind of bill. But a ball, but it's all muscle. By hitting Froming, though, it keeps the base runner at first base, otherwise Trio is... Moved around. He might have gone all the way to third. I guarantee you one thing. Bruce is hot. <laughs> he probably Because <laughs> somebody down in that Philadelphia dugout, you know, is yelling out at him. Move around. Get out of the way. <laughs> Gary Maddox is the hitter with two out. <laughs> Manny Trio on first base. Maddox having knocked in the go-ahead run. Rose looking on. It was Maddox last night who took the considered risk and moved from second to third and eventually scored the third run of the ball game. Gary swings and misses and strikes out. That's number six for Ryan. The Phillies are turned away after six innings of play at the vet in Philadelphia. Two to one, the Phillies lead. Well, the good-looking quarterbacks in that football game on Saturday, Donnie Little, who is closing in on a whole lot of records for the Longhorns, and J.C. Watts for Oklahoma. We'll have it for you out of the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. What will be Alan Ashby, Craig Reynolds, and the pitcher spot? What if you get an 80-40 score? I'll be tired when I get to the dome. <laughs> Smith and Sambito in the Houston bullpen with the pitcher spot coming up third in this inning. Ruthven delivers an Ashby, hits it a mile high into right center, and it'll be Bake McBride. One out. There's the bullpen. The yes, right goes. Smith and Sambito the lefty. Philadelphia bullpen staying busy behind Ruthven. You have uh, Ron Reed, the right-hander, and Kevin Sorche. Craig Reynolds. Ryan has come out to the on-deck circle. It wouldn't surprise me if Reynolds makes an out that Bill Verdon lets Ryan hit. Right. And he'll put all of his cards on the eighth and ninth inning with the top of his order coming up. It's really a manager's dilemma right now when you get a man pitching like Ryan is or Ruthven, and all of a sudden you get to a position where you have to use a pinch hitter for him. Here's the difference between the designated hitter and the, as in the American League, and they don't have it in the National League. That's fouled away out of play. 
There would be no choice whatsoever. There would be any problem if you're in the American League because you've got the extra man in there. But now you put yourself in the manager spot. Do I take Ryan out or do I leave him in? To the right side, down the line, Rose to the pitcher, Ruthven, they get him. Nice timing on that play. And he's going to hit. Well, you look at it again. Pete's got to stay back, and he's got to play it on the big hop. Now, Reynolds hustling hard down the line, but Ruthven getting over there, a nice underhand toss by Rose, and they just do get him. And as I said before, Ryan will hit. Tonight's attendance is a new record in Pennsylvania history in Major League Baseball. And the pitch is outside and low for ball one. Two balls and no strikes. They give Ryan left center. Last time up, he almost punched one out down the right field line. Three balls and no strikes to the Houston pitcher. That's high, and the pitcher's aboard. You know, it was in this very inning last night that Kenny Bosch made the mental mistake that cost them any last opportunity for the game. Herm Starrett going to the mound to talk to his pitcher. Off day tomorrow for these two teams as they travel to the Astrodome in Houston to resume play. In the meantime, second game of the American League Championship Series. New York at Kansas City with Kansas City winning big today, 7-2. to two. It'll be at 8 Eastern time tomorrow night. Al Michaels, Billy Martin, and Jim Palmer. I'll say this for the Royals. They showed absolutely no trace of hangover from the prior series of playoff defeats at the hands of the Yankees. Game three for the National League Championship Series will be Friday afternoon at 2.30 Eastern time out of the Dome. All right, here is Terry Poole who produced with his bat Houston's run tonight as he knocked Reynolds across. And in the late innings, Maddox, who plays a very shallow center field, Gary has moved back. All the outfielders are back now. Ruthven bins one, gets a strike, one and one. Here's a look at the outfield. This is where you don't want a ball hit over your head, and you want to try and cut it off if it's in the gap. Ball is hit in the gap. Right field to McCry. Can't get it. Goes to the wall. Here comes Ryan. He's going to turn third. They're going to send him home. The throw from Trio. He's in there. The ball skips to the backstop. And Poole goes to third, and we're tied at two. Well, there were all kinds of things happening on that particular play because Nolan Ryan almost cost himself a run. Exactly. He, he was caught. watching the ball. Right. He turned and looked at the ball as it went to the wall, and he should have been running, running, running. And that that's what made the play at the play possible, and they would have had him. Yes, they would have, because you've got a strong arm in Manny Trio, except it's short hops Boone and... They've got the play on Ryan if that's on a long hop. It was a great attempt by McBride. He just about caught that ball. That ball trying to hook back at him. And he almost made a super play. Here he comes moving over to the alley. And this is just what we talked about. You don't want that ball to go to the gap. Just, I don't know whether he got a glove on it or not. Looks he like might have tipped it. Just a little bit. Here's Cabell. Enos is up there having struck out swinging his last two trips against Ruthven. And we're tied now at 2 2 as the Astros try to fight back in the top of the seventh inning. Fly ball hit to the right side. McBride makes the catch. And the inning is over. It was a double and a run batted in for Poole. He moved to third on the throw, but the Astros have tied the Phillies at 2 2 in the middle of the seventh. Well, here is what we were talking about. Nolan Ryan looking at that ball in the alley in right center field. 
He's looking at the ball. Now what that does, after he touches the bag now, he takes a very wide turn around second base. He is running way out, way too far. Now look at the way he comes around third. He's way out of the baseline. He doesn't have to run that far. Takes a wide turn around third. He's doing everything in his power to get thrown out at home plate. Exactly, and that's what made the play possible had the throw not been errant. Now, you get a test and see what kind of shape Nolan Ryan's in. That's he exactly is, right. That's right. He has always been a great conditioner. Very good point. Well, he's been to a major conditioning program since he joined the Astros, thanks to Dr. Gene Coleman, the Astros' director of physical conditioning. Of course, maybe there are times when he, like some other pitchers, is more effective when he's a bit winded or tired. As, well, as you said, Ruthven could bite the rosin bag for walking Nolan Ryan. Well, that's a cardinal sin of late Frank when Fresh. Yep. Always said, oh, those bases on ball. Larry Boer at the plate for the Phillies. Punches the ball foul down the left side, and it's beyond the, the pursuit of Jose Cruz. Bob yep. Boone is on deck, and then the pitcher spot. It's a funny thing. I was just talking about the Astros seem to be a little lethargic, like they're waiting for something to happen. Well, that walk to Ryan and the double by Poole might have been something that was is going to get him going. Morgan can't get it, and Boer is aboard with a single to right. That's the seventh hit. Nolan has given up. Now Verdon will have action immediately in the bullpen. As Tug McGraw on the Philly side. McGraw on the Philly side. It's like Gordy Platson for Houston. Sam Beadle was up some time ago. Well, right now you've got the pitcher spot up next, and you've got to figure Bob Boone to sacrifice. Boone puts it down the right side, gets it past Ryan. It's going to be a base hit. The shortstop has to come all the way over to make the play because Joe Morgan had broken the cover of the first base bag. The ball went right between Ryan and Howe. Perfect punt. Well, there's an Astro turf punt right there. Nine times out of ten, that's going to be a double play. He tries to push it to the first base side. He actually just gets it by Ryan, and now all they can do is run it down. If Nolan comes up with that ball, while well, you've got your chance for a double play. But if, well, that's a big word. Mm. Ryan yeah. charging in right off of the mound, which is the proper place for him to go. You've got Howe coming down the line at first. You've got Cabell coming down the line at third. So you've got all the corners covered, except Booney found the hole. Here's the man that produced the insurance run for the Philadelphia Phillies. He and Maddox. Maddox went from second to third with a stolen base, and then Greg Gross fought off the pitch inside, dumped it in left field for run number three of the ball game last night, and he will come out and hit for the pitcher. You've got to figure that Dallas Green is just about, he's got to think in the back of his mind he wasn't going to go too much farther with Ruthman anyway. Otherwise, he would have Ruthman up in a sacrifice position here. Now it's going to be interesting to see what Dallas wants Gross to do. The Astros still look for the sacrifice, and Cedeno, he is awfully shallow, and look at the gap in right center field. He hits it to right center, it'll go to the wall. There's no way in the world it could run it down. And the first pitch is ball one as he had thrown up the bat handle. Now watch this. There's the outfield. There's Cedeno slightly in left center. The deepest man is a right fielder, Terry Poole. Now, with Ryan behind the count, Green's liable to turn around and change his mind. Nope, he's up the bunt. The pitch is high and away. Two balls and no strikes. The 2 1 pitch. He's got it down. Right back to Ryan. No play at third. Over to first. And the runners move up. Boa has pulled up lane. Boa did pull up. He got an excellent break off the second base. Larry's had that bad rib. We talked about him being taped up from the waist on up. Ryan got off the mound in a hurry, but Boa had such a good jump, he had no play at third. Nolan started to go that way and then saw that there was no use. 
Bill Verdon going to the mound. Now watch the jump that Boa gets. A little running jump. And he's going all the way as soon as the ball's on the ground. Ryan has no chance whatsoever. He starts to go into the slide. And it appeared that he might have just pulled a little something. He's playing there out there ouchy anyway. Smith and Sambito in the Houston bullpen. And the Astros have a camp meeting on the mound. And boy, you've got one of the toughest men at the standing at home plate that you'd ever want to see. Be Just broke. the man that you would want up, that Dallas Green would want up, the contact man. Time is out as Nolan Ryan comes walking down off the mound. We'll get a pitching change. We'll be back. Out and Pete Rose will go to the other side of the plate and hit right-handed against the Brooklyn lefty who plays in Houston. I can't believe that they're I don't know if they're going to go to pitch to Pete Rose Keith. I know that it's a tough decision to make but you've got Bake McBride a left hander you've coming got up to, right behind to walk him Don. I believe that no, oh. I, Nolan Ryan pitched a fine game. He made a mistake with Boa. That's why they won't pitch to him right there and they're not going to pitch to him. the precise nope. man you want up. Nolan Ryan made a pitching mistake to Larry Boa. He went to a change of speed pitch with Boa, and he was able to jerk it to right field. With Boa, you overpower. You throw hard. I don't see anybody throwing in the Houston bullpen Dave right Smith now. Dave Smith was up. Well, I want to see how Joey throws. He's got a cut on the middle finger of his left hand. It occurred in an odd way. The night of the pennant celebration. He went in, they handed him a bottle of champagne. He was pulling the cork out, and out came a piece of glass, cut the middle finger of his pitching hand. He said it did not penetrate the skin that deeply, and that he is unaffected in terms of pitching effectiveness. So let's watch. The base is loaded, one out. Sam Vito, lefty, against McBride, lefty. Strike one. You know, it's going to get to be how this game of baseball turns around. You're going to have to get clubs that you figure pennant contenders are going to have to have a session in spring training on how to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> well, in Brooklyn, we never opened bottles of champagne. <laughs> I didn't have any. <laughs> one strike pitch to McBride. Low and away. Good stop by Ashby. One and two. Struck him out. There's a big out, and here comes Bill Verdon. There's a right-hander in the Houston bullpen that figures to be Smith. You've got Mike Schmidt now to the on-deck circle. A right-handed hitter. It's a 2 2 ball game. You have Boa at third, Boone at second, Rose at first. Zambito comes in and strikes out Bake McBride. And Dave Smith will come out of the bullpen, a right hander for the Houston Astros. Maybe the cut helped him, Keith. So time we'll is be out. back in just a moment. Smith since the All-Star break, six and three with a 155 earned run average and nine saves. Last week bothered some with a full muscle behind his right shoulder. He has only pitched one time in the past 11 days. Yeah, but he's been amazing. He was only a starter in the minors, and yet he's been so impressive as a reliever. He is outside to Mike Smith with his first pitch. You have Boa at third, Boone at second, Rose at first. But right now the contest is between the pitcher and the hitter over that 60 feet six inches. Right, good pitch. Nifty pitch. One of the big reasons about Smith that Bill Verdon has not been able to use him that much. He actually, Howard, you said it, he's been a starter in the minor leagues. He has not adjusted his muscle tone, has not adjusted yet to relieving, and he gets stiff on the right side underneath his arm. He's got to let that stiffness work out. Close. Smith checks on it. Two balls and one strike. Mike fouls it away. Upstairs, out of play. He's had things working for him and against him. Against him, 
He's worked so effectively without real prior knowledge of the hitters. For him, the hitters, he's been strange to them. Well, he uses a fork ball as a changeup. He's got good motion with it. And he'll throw it at any time. Right now, he's looking probably for the biggest strike three that he's had in his young career. He'll nice settle for a fly right ball. There. For an out, you're right. There oh, is a call. Oh, That's did he fool him? Ball. He got him with a fork ball. Mike does not like the call, but the Phillies are turned away, and everybody that roots for Houston can take a deep breath on that one, I'll tell you. Whew. Well, here's that final strike against Mike Schmidt and the youngster Dave Schmidt. The off-speed pitch, and there's the fork ball, and Schmidt is fooled, and that is a strike. Boy. How can you be that young? What, 23 years old? 25. Come in, 25. Come into a situation like that. Here's the man who has hit more home runs than any third baseman in Major League history. Has led the Major Leagues this year in home runs in 48. And come in there and throw that pitch. Tug McGraw is out on the mound for the Phillies now in relief of Dick Ruthman. A 2-2 ball game. Tug saved it last night. He's in a position now to win it. Well, what you have to wonder about Tug, I said he spent a lot of time on the trainer's table today, is how many times you can go to the well. Because he was just brilliant in the Montreal series when the Phils clinched the pennant. Last night, yes, he got away with it. But observers who are close to this business know that Tug was hit hard last night. Two long shots against him. And he wasn't pitching the way he had against Montreal. Now we'll have to see. Joe Morgan, who's seen the caller a lot lately, is at the plate and takes ball one from Tuck McGraw. Joe has walked twice and hit a fly ball to center tonight. Hit hard, right side. McBride goes over, will play it off the wall. Joe Morgan turns, digging for second base. And he's in there with a stand-up double to lead the top of the eighth inning. Remember what I said. Houston hasn't broken through yet. But how many times can you go to the well? Well, the pitch was up over the plate. And the one thing you figure that Joe Morgan is going to take away from Tug McGraw is a screwball. And that ball, the Astros get a break. It does not bounce right back to McBride. It bounces high up in the air. If that ball comes back to McBride, he holds him to a long single because he was playing it off the wall all the way. There, once again, you see Joe changing his shoes. He takes off the spike shoe on the left side that he needs to keep a toe hold, exchanges that with Bobby Lillis, and puts on the soft shoe. I thought that we'll time, have Lillis slide instead of Morgan. <laughs> that time, uh, Morgan showed the effects of the sore knee, too, when he made the turn going around first. Now, Cruz, who so often hits to left. Let's see. If he bunts. Now we'll see how Bill Verdon wants to play it. You want to sacrifice him along. The Phillies think so. Cruz takes a full swing for strike one. So Rose and Schmidt back up just a little bit as Cruz takes a peek at Don Leopard as third base coach. Heat coming in, creeping in. Doesn't come now. The ball is hit sharply. It's in the right center field for a base hit. Morgan turns third. He's going to come to score. 3-0 could not come up with it. And the Houston Astros are back on top. 3-2. to two. Well, there's what Bill Verdon was gambling on a little bit. He was gambling that Cruz has enough bat control that he can pull that ball to the right side and advance Morgan to third. The infield was shortened up just a little bit. They were all looking for the bunt. It was just out of the reach of Manny Trio. And now, all of a sudden, Houston on top. 3-2. And we said before, it could have been that one walk to Nolan Ryan that got him going. There you see, Trio was on the move. As the pitch was made, had to stop and go back to his right. And here is Cedeno. I had a long talk, Keith, with Chio Cruz. We'll watch this pitch before the game. Out off. And I talked to him about his ability to use the whole ballpark in his hitting. We've already talked about his ability to go to left. 
and he says that's why he plays winter ball every year and all year round. He said, I use the Puerto Rican League to learn how to hit scientifically. He's done a good job. Said he spent hours just working on hitting the ball to different sectors of the field. A one strike pitch to Cesar. Sharply. Boa. Scoot. Second. One. First. Two. That's one of those artificial turf balls with eyes that work for the defense. The well, ball was hit like a shot. It was hit hard, but Bowl went over, just made the routine play, a nice little flip to Manny Trio, and they double him up with ease. Larry moving well to his left, that ball right there. Now the little, nice little toss right about eye high to shoulder high to Trio. Art Howe takes strike one. O'Shea and Reed are throwing back a McGraw in the Philadelphia bullpen. The trio handles the spinner and throws him out. So Art Howe continues without luck here at Pet Stadium in Philadelphia. But Joe Morgan entered home on Cruz single, and he has given the Houston Astros the lead in the middle of the eighth inning by a score of three to two. Question now is whether or not young Dave Smith can contain the Phillies. ABC News Nightline tonight after your local news examines the growing wave of anti-Semitism in France following several violent incidents over the past few weeks. Ted Koppel talking via satellite with Simon Wiesenthal, the famed Nazi hunter, and Rabbi Williams, whose synagogue was bombed recently. That'll be after your local news tonight on Nightline. Well, Dave Smith with a fork ball got Mike Schmidt looking for the third out when the Phillies had the bases loaded in the seventh. He'll start off with Greg Luzinski, then Manny Trio and Gary Maddox. Dave Bergman has gone to first base for Houston. Dave Bergman is now at first. In the hole to left field by Luzinski. And so the Phillies have the leadoff man aboard here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And the ball continues to come through when most it matters. Now Lazinski coming out as Lonnie Smith will go in to run for him. And listen to the hand from Lazinski. And Lonnie Smith can flat fly. He sure can. They can drive all they want about Dallas Green. This is a man who uses a roster. He gets everything you can get out of each and every player. Frank LaCorte is up in the Houston bullpen now as Dallas Green looks on. In case you wonder about Smith's speed, he stole 33 bases, was caught 16 times. He played in 100 games for Philadelphia this season. He's a rookie. Some think. Likely the rookie of the year in the National League. And the bunt is fouled off at the plate. There's LaCordy, the right-hander. Manny Trio with Maddox on deck. He's got a foot on the carpet. The bunt roll down the first base side. It's a good bunt. Morgan has to come and cover. The first baseman, Bergman, makes the play. They advance the runner with a sacrifice. One up. He did his job. That ball for a moment looked like it just about had eyes yeah, like, like Bob Boone. Boone. That's right. It almost squeaked through there. That might be a whole new offensive weapon on this artificial That's surface. Such a typical Houston ball game. All year long, they would scratch, they would claw, they would hang in there with their pitching, a one-run game, and then opportunistically and with their speed, get the edge run and then cling to that lead. Let's see if they can do it tonight. Gary Maddox hits it right down the line and it's just foul. Oh, that was close. It sure was. And Cabell playing quite a ways off the line and he might turn around and just kind of adjust his thinking a little bit. 
It was right on the line, two thirds of the way down, and then just skipped outside the bag. Well, there was no complaint from the third base coach, Ilya. One strike on Maddox. Swinging strike. Gary has knocked in a run tonight. They've got to keep an eye on Smith, and it's going to be up to Joe Morgan to try and do that. Reynolds playing straight away. Hit the center. Cedeno comes in, plays it on the bounce. He'll throw it through. And it's not in time. Smith scores from second base, and we're tied at three as Maddox goes into second. Well, that's twice tonight that Gary Maddox has come through. And all the talk of friction between him and his manager can be forgotten. He didn't hit the ball that hard, and that enabled Lonnie Smith to go all the way. You see Cedeno trying to time it. He gets it, he makes a strong throw to the plate, but Smith just flat out runs the throw. And on the play, Maddox was going to second base all the way. He was going to make him cut the ball off if they want to and make a play on him. Now time call as Billy Burton is going to go to the mound with pesky Larry Boa at the plate. They have Frank LaCorte in the bullpen ready. And, of course, the key here was the ability to take second base on the throw, the runner in scoring position, and bang, a single. The Bills take the lead. We're in the bottom of the eighth. We've got the kind of ball game that the Houston-Los Angeles wind-up series featured three days in a row, last Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. A one-run ball game either way at any moment. The two teams, as we said, scratching and clawing. Dallas Green, impassive. But how he's used his roster throughout the season. They won't take a chance on Bo. They'll just walk him and they'll set it up to the right hand hitting catcher, Bob Boone. It's no bargain either. This guy's a much better hitter than the season he's had. Sure got that key hit in Montreal Friday night against the Expos, I'll tell you that. No, Saturday night. Saturday night. Let's get those days straight. Saturday night. Doc. That's exactly what it was. It was Saturday night. It was two strike pitch Why from Woody Friday. Friday. I didn't say Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Booney's up. Young Smith mopping his brow. A 3 3 ball game with one out. And Maddox with plenty of speed at second base. Strike one. That was the pitch that Mike Schmidt stabbed. Now the pitcher comes out. Almost threw that one to the backstop. Just about. He tried to overthrow that pitch a little bit. A fine play by Alan Ashby. Another good pitch. One oh, and two. Joe Morgan liked to jump right. He out of his shoes. He's at second base now saying something to Dave Smith. Said, man, don't throw that that's at home when I'm here standing here at second base. He's hot. You can you could see Booney swing. He tried to take a shot to that right side. The whole right side was wide open. Foul tip, and it is held by Ashby. And Bob Boone is out of there. Out number two. Smith gets tough, isn't he? He is tough. He is. He's got guts. Now McGraw's going to come out. He's going to give way to Dell Unser. Dell Unser will hit for McGraw. Once again, Dallas Green making every move available to him. Earlier, he used Greg Gross, who executed a successful sacrifice, but on came Young Smith, and he cleaned house, striking out Fake McBride and Mike Schmidt. Unser on the season, you saw his numbers as a pinch batter. On the season, he had 264 in 96 games. Oh, 
two out. And the pitch is just off the plate for ball one. That face never changes. He understands that this is not all of his life and he can take these things too seriously. Hit in the air to the left side. Cruz drifting to the line will have a play. And he makes the catch for the third out. But Philadelphia fights back. As Luzinski singles, Smith runs for him. They sacrifice him to second, and then Gary Maddox drove him home. And we are tied after eight innings of play in Philadelphia at 3-3. Three, three. The speechster who scored the tying run a moment ago, replacing Luzinski. And we have the third Philadelphia pitcher in the ball game, Ron Reed, with a record of 7-5 on the regular season. Making, he made 55 appearances during the year with an earned run average of 4.05. Ron's been around a while with the Atlanta Braves. Basically, he's a fastball slider type pitcher. He'll go to an off-speed pitch of trying to use the fork ball and the palm ball a little bit. Alan Ashby, <coughs> Craig Reynolds, and Nolan Ryan, and this will be the fourth time in this ball game that Ashby has let off an inning. He's yet to get on base. Ron Reed played in the NBA, a basketballer who went to Notre Dame, dreamed of being a baseball player. To the second baseman trio, to Rose, one out. Reed got a tryout from Charlie Finley when Charlie owned the A's, but he got short shrift. Trying out the same day was a fellow named Jim Hunter. They called him Catfish. They signed Catfish. And uh, Finlay has never regretted the outcome. The on-deck circle empty with a pitcher scheduled in the third spot. Reynolds up. Walked and scored the first run for Houston. Fouled out. And was thrown out. And Smith comes out. Dave Smith. Roll to the second baseman trio. Second foot out of the inning for many. Smith ball back. Let's see who Bill Verdon sends out to face Ron Reed. I know who the Phil send up, Mr. Jackson. They begin with Pete Rose. Yep. That's Terry Poole that's come out, isn't it? That's yes. Poole. There you go. Here comes Jeff Leonard. Poole, of course, the hitting hero for the Astros tonight, he's knocked in two of their three runs. The other one knocked in by Jose Cruz. That one in the eighth to give Houston its then one-run edge, but they couldn't hang on to it. Two out, nobody on, a 3-3 ball game at the top of the ninth inning. And Jeff Leonard will come up as a pinch batter. We saw him last night. Leonard on the season. 214. Oh, and that one bit Bob Boone. Rooney, I think, got that on the right knee. They have to take another peek at it. Nope, got him on the right shoulder. Yep. And that stings. You don't have all the protection on that right side. You have to have a little bit of freedom so that you're able to throw. One strike pitch to Leonard. That's two of them. Leonard six hits and 24 trips with a home run. As a pinch hitter. Two out. And reads inside. 
was it? I guess Gene Conley was the first fellow to try to combine basketball and baseball. He did it pretty efficiently, up to a point. Chuck Connors, Dave DeBush. <laughs> Quick three, Paul Leonard out looking, and Reed turns him away. So Ron showed he still has great velocity with that pitch. And we'll go to the bottom of the ninth inning with a score tied at 3-3. Three, three. We'll be back with more after this commercial and a word from our local station. McCourty is in now to pitch for Houston on the season 8-5, and five, earned run average 282. He appeared in 55 games. And LaCourty, basically a fastball hitter. He'll come from the side and throw over the top a little bit. And he has what he calls a knuckle curve. He can throw hard. He's right around that 90 mile an hour mark. He's also the pitcher that gave up the home run, Ron Say, on Sunday, forcing the playoff. The American League Championship Series, game number two, tomorrow night, 8 Eastern Time. The Yankees and the Royals. Dennis Leonard pitching for Kansas City and Rudy May for New York. Right now we're concerned with the bottom of the ninth inning and the top of the Philadelphia batting order against LaCorte, Pete Rose, Bake McBride, and Mike Schmidt. Rose a single twice and walked twice. If you had to stack the deck, you couldn't ask for it to turn out any better than this. Not for the Phils, you couldn't. Pete takes a full swing. Right there is the first reason you couldn't ask for a better stack deck. That graph. Ball is hit pretty well to center field, forcing Cedeno to go to the run, but he's back in plenty of time to make the catch, and you've got one out. Well, like Don said, the memo from the pitchers union is he's the best. <laughs> <laughs> he's something. He's a pain. <laughs> oh, I said that. <laughs> I cried now. <laughs> Get to the on deck circle. This was the key out for Young Smith during his relief stint. Now it's LaCourt, but the Sambito struck out Rose and in came Smith. strike pitch and it's fouled away by McBride for a count of one and one. There's Fake's wife Celeste we showed her previously. She hasn't changed an expression. McCourty has had some tendonitis trouble this season. One time he was off two weeks. Pitch is up high. In September and October he only worked nine innings and we told you that it was say that ripped him for the home run last Sunday and there's a man right there that can rip anybody for a home run Schmidt like waiting in the on deck circle McBride swings at a pitch well up it's two and two the right field base hit by McBride The Phillies send up their man. And such a big ball game for Houston. Should things not go their way to turn around and go back down, even though they are going to their home ballpark, the Astrodome, but down two, and it's only the best three out of five. That's an awful tough ladder to try and climb. I count no one out after watching the Bucks come from three games to one last year in the World Series to win it. Look at Mike. Seven home runs in the ninth inning this season. Pass the shot back into left center field. Base hit for Mike Schmidt. Cedeno comes in and holds the runner at second and Lonnie Smith will come to the plate. Bills now have 12 hits. They have the look of a team that is a far cry from those teams that have failed 
in the playoffs in the past. They do not have the look of losers. Well, we said last night that to a man, the members of the Philly squad that have been here before, as you look at Bill Burden and Mel Wright, the pitching coach, they feel as though that the attitude is so much different this year coming into the playoffs and in the years past. You got one out. You got the winning run sitting out at second base and the person of Bake McBride who has good speed and the pitch to Lonnie Smith is on the corner. And McBride is taking a lot of liberties out of second base. Watch him now. He's got a run and lead here as Laporta sets himself. And the pitch is inside. Six base runners have stolen with Laporta on the mound. One has been caught. Question here is, Keith, can the Bull do it again? Smith when he's gone. So one and one. And it misses two and one. Correction. Escapes for scorecard here. Yeah? Smith, of course. What a pity, though. I'd love to have seen the ball gone. He's been hot. He's been hot. There's Lonnie's wife coming up. Lazinski in the eighth. Had the single. Smith went in to run for him, and Smith scored when Maddox singled. After being sacrificed to second to tie the score at 3 3. Now Lonnie has a chance to win it for the Philly. Maddox creeping off. Well, it was sort of a half swing, but LaCordy will take it. Two and two. He went around. There was no question whatsoever. There's a stat. Houston leaving six men on base. The Phillies nine tonight. Houston with only five hits. High high curveball. So we'll go to three and two. Fouls it back. The three two pitch to Smith is fouled away. The three two pitch fouled away. Same story upstairs. Fouled away. Fouled away again. At six in a row. So the rookie's hanging in. And Lacordi's got to keep getting that ball over the plate. That's exactly right because he's got a tough cookie coming up next. Should he walk in and load the bases and many trio with only sure one out? Does. Does not want that man on third with one out. Hit to the right side, right fielder pool comes, can't play it. Maddox turn, McBride held at third. McBride. I don't know if he was looking at Elia, was he? They really got confused because I think Lee Elia thought that the right fielder was going to catch the ball. Yep. And he had the runner holding up at third. It's too late then. If he catches the ball, it's a double play. Now we'll take a look at it one more time. Poole charging hard, the ball hanging just a little bit. And Ely, I think, thought he was going to catch it. He catches that ball in a very dangerous Indeed. short hop. Now he makes a strong throw Beautiful after throw. McBride has to hold at third. He's McBride's got to keep running going. all the way, though, Don. He's got, he's if he keeps close. running all the way, he's dead anyway. He yep. may as well just keep right on running. Here he comes now. He turns around. They told him if he catches the ball, now he's trying to wave him on now. If he catches Wait. the ball, it's a double play anyway. Now he can't do nothing. They got the bases loaded. I One think out. McBride did it to himself. Yeah, he, he was looked. looking back at the right fielder. Never Look. even looked at Ilya. And then Ilya waved him on, and then wisely, at that point, he had no choice but to go back. The throw would have had him. A dead duck. Oh, he's dead. If he keeps coming, he's dead. Everybody in on top. Now, infield in. Outfield in. Everybody in. Bases are loaded with one out for Trio. Foul back. 
Well, one of our colleagues working in Kansas City right now might just put on the squeeze, Mr. Lee Martin. It's true. And I'm not too sure it might not be on. Inside with the pitch. One and one. There's Mrs. Trio. Maria. Gary Maddox to the on back circle. With Trio up there in a count of 1 1. Foul back. 1 and 2. You talk about Ooh. a big strikeout. Ooh. Boy, you say to yourself, how long can. The Houston Astros keep walking on this tightrope. That looked like he's a high pitch. Too. Oh, good. He got a fast ball up. Take another look at that ball. Seems like it comes up. He gets underneath the ball. Yep. And the ball kind of takes off on trio. Now the infield back, the outfield back. Some of the fans have gone back to their seats. And there's two outs. And we're still tied. Here's a guy that's been nothing but trouble though tonight for mm. Houston. And that's Jerry Maddox. He's driven in two of the three runs. He's done what Poole has done for Houston. He's been the key hitter, although Lazinski must be accredited too. Greg got two big hits while he was in there. High pop up on the right side. It looks playable. Burton coming across and makes the catch. And would you believe it? Yeah. No. So the Houston Astros have not had their last hurrah, at least not tonight. The Phillies are turned away. We'll go extra innings. We're tied at three. There's the line score in the ball game, and it's a dandy. Three, three. But Philadelphia with 13 base hits. Houston only five. And Keith, the Phillies have left eight men on in the last three innings, three in the ninth, two in the eighth, three in the seventh. They've left nine men on through the last four innings and 10 men on through the last five innings. Now that's incredible. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Terry Poole, the top of the order, Enos Cabell and Joe Morgan so now the Astros have the top of their hitting order to challenge Ron Reed. That's the first time they've had a look at it. Sharply hit to the right side for a base hit. McBride cuts it off and Poole turns it first and holds with a solid single to right field. Boy, oh, he's a good ball player. Yeah, he really is. He's had such key hits tonight. He and can you imagine what it would do for the spirits of the Houston Astros and off day to, if they could win this game and off day to regroup and then going home to the Astrodome. And Ryan did exactly what he's been doing all year despite the 11 and 10 record. You'll remember he told me in the pregame interview as you look at the Philly bullpen going to work. He said I've kept my team in the games I've pitched and that's what he did tonight. 14 times he's done that this year. Dickie Knowles and Soche up in the Philadelphia bullpen. Cabell is up now. Now yes. you've got a bunch situation. Excuse me, Keith. You got Smith coming down the line at third, and Rose will be charging down the line at first. The infield shortened up just a little bit. Poole trying to get a foothold on the carpet. And Reed trying to hold him. The men who have failed tonight for Houston in the clutch of this man, Cabell and Odd Howe, now out of the game, replaced by Burke. Pop up. Rose Gorn dives and Petey can't get it. I thought he's going to get it. That's just the way Pete Rose plays. I really thought he was going to make the catch of that ball. If it goes up again, I'll bet you in the same spot he makes the catch. That ball high in the air. Rose cutting over. And he just did miss it. And up. But he missed that, it. On that surface, you don't skid either. You no. stick. Right. Boy, it's tough. He didn't really even bounce, did he? <laughs> How do you like that? One sacrifice bunt this season. No wonder he missed it. He's had no practice. Turns again. Puts it down. Rose comes in. Takes it on the bounce. Tags him out. Sacrifice effective as pool. Goes to second. One out. Now they got the guy up that they would want up. Mr. Morgan. 
The man who gave Houston the one-run lead in the eighth inning, or at least scored it, he doubled. Chill Cruz singled him home. Well, you've got the left-hander Soche in the bullpen, the right-hander Dickie Knowles. You've got two left-handers coming up right now, and they're not going to take any chances with Joe Morgan. They'll just put him aboard to have seen what you can do all your career, pal. And now you might see Dallas Green make a move to Cruz. He I might think to the left-hander Soche. Now, if he does that, he's going to find, and he knows it, that Chio is a good bat manipulator against lefty or righty. Well, if he gets by Cruz, then he has to come with a right-hander, Cedeno, then maybe Dallas is going to stay with him. We'll have to wait and see. And it appears that he is. He will stay right with his big right-hander, Ron Reed. And so Jose Cruz gets a little extra edge in the challenge here as he comes up. The bat left-handed against the big right-hander. Runs batted in leader of this Houston team. Over 90 runs batted in this year. There's the man on deck, Cesar Cedeno. Ball is hit to the right side, in he the hole, it. base hit. Here comes Terry Poole, around third, the throw to the plate. Poole steams across and scores, and the ball bounces to the backstop. And Joe Morgan moves over to third, and Cruz to second. Now you can second-guess Dallas Green if you want, but Cruz is just a solid ball player. We've talked about the way he's taught himself to use the ballpark in his hitting. We've talked about the fact that he's been the clutch hitter for the Houston Astros all year long. Here it is again. This time, he gets a pitch to pull, and he, he does just that. And the big thing right here is Ron Reed does not get behind home plate to back up. It gets by Boone. There you see Reed shaking hands with the on-deck hitter, and the ball goes by him, and the other runners move up 90 feet. He started to first base, but once that ball goes through, he's got to get behind home plate. Now the complexion changes in the ball game with Houston jumping to a 4-3 lead. And you've got base runners Morgan at third and Cruz at second. And here is Cedeno. It's a single, a run batted in, and an error on the throw from right field. And the infield in. And boy, that makes Caesar a better hitter right here as you look at Dallas Green down in the dugout. Now time called Joe Morgan getting time from the third base umpire Eddie Vargo and now I want to see what's going to happen here. I believe Joe might take himself out of the ball That's game. Exactly right. what he's doing. I think he's going to come in talk to Billy Verdon and Rafael Landestoy will probably go out to run for him and then go on into his position at second base. That's what's going to happen. That's exactly what he's doing and Joe with a day's rest tomorrow you can bet we'll be back on the ensuing day. Tomorrow at 8 o'clock, don't forget, game number two, the American League Championship Series, bringing it to you, Al Michaels, Billy Martin, Billy Martin, and Jim Palmer, Jim Palmer. <laughs> you all right? Are yeah. you stuck? <laughs> <laughs> you got caught up in the excitement. <laughs> no, there was a profile of Billy Martin done earlier this year called Billy Martin, Billy Martin, and it was very good. <laughs> <laughs> Phillies have had a lead. They've seen the Astros come back and tie. The Astros took the lead. The Phillies have come back to tie, and now it's seesaw the other way. Well, Houston sure one's enough. The way things are no, going. No, I know it. No, but ahead here, well, a fly ball will produce a pretty close. Coming up for the Bills in the bottom half of the inning, Larry Boa, Bob Boone, and, and the pinch hitter. And the pitcher spot, right. Cedeno taps it back to the middle. They'll come to the plate for a play, and no! It is 5-3 Houston. There is a heads up play by Rafael Landestoy because that ball jammed Cedeno and it's strictly a contact play. The ball got by Reed. Watch Reed's follow through. 
Reed coming off has no chance. That ball back over the mound. The contact plays on Landestoy coming. Bow in a desperate attempt, but Landestoy with excellent speed underneath the tag. And here comes Dallas Green. He'll go to the left-hander right now. But again, Morgan took himself out of the game. Landestoy exactly the right man to have in there at that time. Landestoy with 23 stolen bases on the year. One of six Astros who have stolen 20 or more bases this season. No team has done that since McGraw's Giants in 1913. We'll be right back. Kevin Soche, left-hander, is in now for Philadelphia with a record of 7-3 and three on the regular season. He appeared in 40 games with a 3-4-2 earned run average, as you see. And he is another one of the youngsters that they're building this franchise around for the future. Got a whole bunch of young, strong arms. Larry Christensen apparently has overcome his frailties with surgery and come back. Dickie Knowles, Bob Walk, Mark Davis. We saw him in Montreal, a 19-year-old who can bring it. And, of course, Marty Bystrom, who came up late and was activated and made eligible for the championship series. Dave Bergman steps to the plate now for the Astros. Houston leading 5-3 in the top of the 10th inning. Cruz at second, Cedeno at first, and ball one. Soche, his main asset, he's got a good live fastball. And when I mean live, sometimes he gets it to where he's not really too, it's got so much movement on it, it's hard to control. He's high. You look at Booney behind old plate, and you talk to some of the Philly catches, you say, they'll just sit right down the middle and then let the movement take care of itself, whether it goes inside, whether you're outside. Berkman hits it up the alley and gone through the gap to the wall. Here comes Cruz around third. Here comes Sedeno. And it's a triple for Berkman, and it's seven to three, Houston. I tell you, those fans in Houston who are among the best sports fans anywhere in the world are going to take the Houston Oilers fight song, and they're going to make it the Houston Astros. Well, you've got to take your hat off to these Astros. They have had their back to the wall many times tonight, and look at it one more time. The pitch up over the plate, and Bergman got it all, found the gap in right center field. And by the time they get the ball back in, two more runs had scored. And as Keith said, it's 7-3. to three. But they have really bowed their neck tonight. Well, if this lead holds at the end of the game, and it looks like it will, Love Ya Blue will become Love Ya Orange tomorrow. And they'll just change the words a little bit. What? <laughs> they'll change the words from... Houston has the Oilers. They're the oh, greatest I football see. team. Right, Houston that, has the Astros. Okay. They're the greatest baseball team. <laughs> I just want to see if you knew the <laughs> words. <laughs> I've got Meredith. Uh, Schmidt at third. He holds Berkman and throws to first. You know, That's Keith, out. you can't say enough for the way that these Houston pitchers have worked tonight. Starting off with Nolan Ryan. Then Sam Beto came on in a jam, got a big strikeout. Young Dave Smith, Frank LaCorte had his back right to the wall, and he was almost down on both knees. He got out of it. Craig Reynolds is up there, and they're going to walk him intentionally. 7-3 Astros in the top of the 10th inning. Well, the Astros went to spring training with six men capable of starting. They had one need, right-handed relief pitching. Somebody to help Sam Beto, the southpaw. They came up with two, Lacordi and Dave Smith. The pitch is low ball one to the Astro pitcher. Team designed for its ballpark perfectly. One and one. I'll tell you, though, Frank LaCordia will just be floating. His feet won't touch the ground after Say ripped him last Sunday with that home run to force the one-day playoff <laughs> after tonight. It'll be Schmidt, the third baseman. Short hop, good play, throws him out. Well, the inning is over. The top of the tent. The Phillies have another swing, but... 
Houston counts four and leads seven to three. Back with more after this word from our local station. Well, now there will be some humming and hawing over the coffee cups in the morning. Over, and the man is going to be the primary topic of the conversation is that man right there as he stayed with Ron Reed and uh, let him pitch. Poole and Morgan and uh, Cruz, and particularly in the case of Cruz, Cruz was the key man, and uh, he, Cruz delivered. And by the time he brought in Soche, it was too late. Well, what he had to do, he had two choices. He could stay just exactly what he was doing right there. He could have brought in the left-hander to pitch to Cruz. If he got him out, he could have brought the right-hander in to uh, to pitch to Cedeno. But the left-hander pitched to Bergman. What happened? He hit the triple, killed it. <laughs> Bergman wasn't up there. Maybe Dallas knows more than we do. He might. <laughs> Larry Boa, Bob Boone, pitcher spot. Those are the three scheduled here in the home half of the tenth inning. As much Frank Lacorte with a chance to get a win. Inside. This game is not over yet, but should the Astros go on and win, as much as this can pump Houston up, it can take a little wind out of the sails of the Philadelphia Phillies, too. One and one. And boy, as we said before, they have left all kinds of men on base. They have left 10 men on base the last five innings. These Philadelphia fans empty out in a hurry. Yeah, they're gone. Place is more than half empty now. to the first baseman Bergman over and they don't do it. More speed. Well, that was an excellent effort by Bergman and LaCorte. That was a tough play. Bergman only had one play. He's got to try and get it on the big hop and then tried to flip it behind him to LaCorte. LaCorte saying something to Froming that he tagged him going by. The throw just a little high. Oh. Looks to Lame me like see. the bag. Looks if, to me like if he, he got the it. bag, he might be out. We'll take another peek at that. And Bruce right there on top of it. He's out. He's uh -oh. out. Uh oh. Interesting. Inside pitch to Bob Boone. George Vukovic in the on deck circle. Inside, two balls and no strikes. It's Joaquin and Juhar in the bullpen. Inside again. Baguni, three balls and no strikes. And here comes Mel Wright, the pitching coach. Wants to settle Frank Lacorti. Bo is at first base. On a bouncer that hung and hung and hung and uh, he beat it out. The American League Championship Series tomorrow night at 8 Eastern time here on ABC. Kansas City beat the Yankees 7 to 2 today. It'll be Rudy May and Dennis Leonard. The starting pitchers in game number two. And he walks Boone. This will give managers gray hair. Put it mildly. <laughs> Here is George Vukovic, 224 on the regular season in 58 at bats. There are two Vukovic on the Philadelphia roster, John and this young man, George. They are not related. LaCorte misses. High and away for ball one. You want to dig a hole for yourself. This is the way to do it. There is. Ball two. Now he's fighting himself. That's all. Billy Burden says I've seen enough. I'm not going to go any further because all of a sudden you've got the top of that lineup coming up. Pete Rose on deck. You got Bake McBride followed by Schmidt. 
And they're going to go to Joaquin Andujar right now. So the fifth Astro pitcher comes on. A pitching change, and right now it is seven to three, Houston. The numbers on Joaquin Andujar reflected there. Now the question is whether or not he can throw strikes as he comes along as the fifth Houston pitcher in the ball game. Well, his whole career has been a puzzlement. It's generally agreed the man has exceptional ability, excellent stuff, and yet he's not a winner. He's had many complaints, as so many do when they're not doing well. Found many reasons, but it's been his fed. Two and all count on Vukovic. And Andy Har is in the strike zone. Two and one. And I'm sure Bill Verdon has a warm feeling all over after seeing a strike. Rose on deck. Nobody out. McBride follows Rose. In the air to the left side. Cruz has a play. One out. And you are asks for time. First baseman Bergman comes over. He's talking now to Craig Reynolds his shortstop as Pete Rose comes to the plate. A little defensive strategy being worked here as to how Andy Har wants to pitch to Rose. And that could be the whole thing and Reynolds is telling him where how you're going to pitch him. How do you want me to play him. This is what we talked about in the meeting. They should know enough of that. They've seen him all year long but just kind of to refresh their minds. That's all. Hit on the ground of the second baseman Landis Stoy. over to Reynolds one back to first throws it in the seats. And it is a seven to four ball game. Boa scoring. Make it seven four. This game. In its own way has put itself in the record book hasn't it. Rose is now at second. You've got two out. In a seven to four ball game for Bake McBride. Just low. Look who's waiting. McBride looks and it's low again. Two balls and no strikes. And here's the man you want. Is Mike Schmidt. That man represents the tying run if McBride gets aboard. Ball three low. the way it's gone all night long. <laughs> Both teams will be exhausted. Need the day off after this one. Not worried about the teams. I'm worried about dry stuff. <laughs> strike. Three balls, one strike to McBride with two out. If Bake gets on, Mike Schmidt comes up and Schmidt will represent a tying run in a seven to four ball game game number two of the National League Championship Series. Ball four. So the Major League home run king Mike Schmidt represents the tying run. If Bill Burton can survive this game he can survive anything. <laughs> I think Bill's going to spend tomorrow in bed. I wouldn't wait. <laughs> Maybe that's he anticipated this. That's why they're not working out tomorrow. That's why I do. Bill's is supposed to work out at 4 o'clock Houston time. Maybe only Dallas Green will show. <laughs> the pitch to Mike Schmidt. Outside, ball one. Well, you've got Lonnie Smith on deck, and you've got the third baseman 
Enos Cabell, now he's got to guard the line. You've got the first baseman Bergman in a position where they have to guard the line. So you've got your infielders spread just a little bit more than usual. There you see. Straight away at short, maybe slightly towards the hole is Reynolds. Land the story over towards the bag at second base. Outside ball two. Lottie Smith is on deck. If Schmidt gets aboard, the bases will be loaded. And then Smith would represent you know what. Here really comes the discipline of a hitter right now. Low ball three. It's been thoroughly explained. Mike Schmidt at the plate represents the tying run. Base runners. Pete Rose at second. Bake McBride at first. High in the air to the right side. Terry Poole under it. And he makes the catch and the Astros have won it seven to four and even the championship series in the National League at one game of And each. Schmidt was given the green light on a 3-0 pitch. Exactly. A remarkable way to see this ball game end. You know full well at 3-0 he's got to be coming right out of his shoes if the ball is in the strike zone and it was a pretty good pitch sailing away and he drove it to the right side and the catch was made. And the final score, Houston 7, the Philadelphia Phillies 4. The Astros even the series at 1. The National League Championship Series heads west to Houston and the Astrodome for Game 3. You'll see the action Friday live at 2.30 Eastern Time.